What's up everybody, Andy here and welcome back to Kit Guru. So recently a lot of people have been needing webcams, whether that's for streaming games online or for productivity in the workplace. And because of this huge influx of webcam use, I'm sure you're like me and you have noticed so many people with horrendous video feeds. Whether that's up the nose shots, harsh backlighting, or just no lighting at all, which can all cause terrible images. Well, Razer aims to come to the rescue with their latest webcam, which is a total overhaul of their previous Razer Kyo. Today we're looking at the brand new Razer Kyo Pro, coming in at a pretty hefty £199.99. We'll be diving into Razer's claims about this product and putting it through its paces with some not so ideal conditions, as well as some optimal conditions to see how it stacks up, and I'll be comparing it to two other webcams as well. And whilst you're there, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below if you enjoy what we do here, because it really does help us out. Razer know how many people aspire to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera for their live stream needs, but also this isn't very practical for many people. To run a DSLR as a webcam, you need a fair amount of knowledge, a pretty deep wallet, and some time to sort out the initial setup. You need a camera that has a clean HDMI output, the correct HDMI lead to fit into the camera, Camera and a capture card in most instances. Yes, Canon now have their webcam utility that bypasses the need for a capture card, but this only works for certain cameras. Of course, all of this also costs some serious cash too. For some, this is fine, but for many others that may not know their way around a camera, this is quite a big learning curve. So Razer are marketing the Kyo Pro as a DSLR killer. It is a USB 3.0 plug and play solution to great image quality. Their aim here is to have the best image possible regardless of your setup or lighting conditions where conventional webcams have difficulty functioning properly. Whether that's a very contrasty streaming location with a dark black background, RGB LEDs and a dim key light to light the subject's face, or a strong backlight from a window, or even as extreme as a very dark room with all the curtains drawn and no lights at all. So Razer hope to accomplish these pretty big feats via the image sensor that they've chosen to use. The Kyo Pro features Sony's IMX327 CMOS sensor with Starvis technology, which claims to be an ultra low light sensor that's currently mainly used in security cameras. So this sensor is capable of a maximum resolution of 1080p, up to 60 frames per second, uncompressed, and before you instantly say, what, no 4K, useless. Well, I'm actually super happy that this webcam is 1080p 60, and that's for two reasons. So reason number one is nobody actually needs a 4K webcam because all streaming platforms max out at 1080p feeds anyway, mainly due to bandwidth limitations, but also because your webcam is usually just a tiny portion of the screen and not normally the entire thing. So your PC will be transcoding all of this 4K data just to downscale it to maybe a 360p image in the corner of the screen anyway. So it's kind of useless. Reason number two, webcam sensor are so small they need all the help they can get to take on as much light as possible. The higher the resolution, the more pixels are crammed into that tiny little sensor, and this means that each pixel takes on less light and can cause poor image quality or grainy images, whereas having less pixels means the pixels can be larger and take on more light, giving a better image in low light conditions. So as an example, let me sidetrack to the latest camera releases, the Canon EOS R5 can record 8K footage, but it has a 45 megapixel sensor that isn't great for video in low light. Whereas my Canon EOS R6 that I'm filming on right now is better in low light for video, but it records up to 4K and it only has 20.1 megapixels. So the 1080p60 isn't sounding so bad now, is it? The Starvis technology in the sensor is an adaptive light technology with backlit pixel technology to increase picture quality in very dark conditions. The camera has a wide f2.0 aperture and larger 2.9 micrometer pixel size to allow even more light in. Also having an uncompressed image feed means that there is more data 
data present and should hopefully lead to better details. So essentially it has a higher bit rate and higher quality 1080p compared to other 1080p webcams. So aesthetically, I love the large black round design. It almost does look a little bit like a security camera to me, but I like that compared to the normal rectangular webcam design that we often see. It comes with a large lens cap too for privacy, which I also like because my Logitech C920, for example, has no filter or anything at all for privacy there. The stand is your classic flexible mount to fit onto a monitor, but what I always love to see is a screw hole to attach the webcam to a tripod or stand, and that's on both the actual stand itself and on the bottom of the webcam as well if you unscrew it from the stand, so nice touch. One thing I absolutely love is the detachable USB-C to USB-A 3.0 cable. This makes me so happy as all the webcams I've ever used have had non-removable cables. The cable razor give you is nice and thick with a tight braid too, so I'm a big fan of that. I do have to say though that this webcam is exceptionally large in comparison to other webcams. So take a look at it here compared to the Logitech C920 and Ava Media's PW313. This isn't an issue in my eyes, especially if you have it on top of a monitor, let's say, but it may be something to consider if you are attaching it to a tiny thin screened notebook laptop, for instance. You can also swivel the camera on the top too, and this is super handy as you can easily angle the webcam to face you if you've got it, you know, at the side or something like that and you want to frame yourself better. Build quality wise, it feels exceptional. It's big and chunky and it feels solid with a mixture of metal and plastic as well. The edges are well machined and molded too, and I'm quite impressed with how it feels in my hands. The fact it has Corning Gorilla Glass 3 across the front protecting the lens proves that Razer want this webcam to last a long time. There's a white LED to indicate when the camera is in use. It's subtle, but it is noticeable so you know when it's on. On either side of the lens, there's a microphone too. So I'm not expecting these to be great because webcam microphones normally aren't very good at all, but it is nice that they've included them. So here's a sound test of the microphones for you. This is a sound test of the Razer Kyo Pro's inbuilt microphones. So they're probably mm, about 60 centimeters away from me, maybe a little bit less. It is on top of my laptop, so the fans are running, so you might hear that as well. So uh, here's the ambient room noise. You might be able to hear my other computer on in the background as well. And obviously this is me talking normally. This is me talking pretty loudly. I can see it's kind of clipping a little bit. And here's me talking quite quietly. And there you go, that is the microphone test. Now, personally, I actually think they're pretty good. They're much better than I expected, and they're definitely better than the other webcams that I've tested in the past. The Kyo Pro has a wide angle lens with an adjustable 103 degrees field of view, and it even has HDR as well, high dynamic range, which is mainly aimed at productivity users that may be heavily backlit by a window, for example. These settings can be enabled in Razer's Synapse software, which we'll look at later. Now, I asked Razer how the HDR function actually worked and whether it only worked via the software. They said HDR is built into the camera's sensor and that Synapse doesn't need to be running for HDR to work. However, Synapse is needed for setting the camera into either HDR mode or normal mode. They also explained that each frame covers a different range of luminance and that adjacent short and long exposure frames are combined in real time in camera. So essentially what this means is HDR uses maximum frame rate of the camera, 60 frames per second, but the output will actually be half that as half of the frames are short exposures and half are long exposures to give a final high dynamic range image. This means that when HDR is enabled, it will put out 30 frames per second instead of 60. This feature is aimed at productivity users, whereas standard mode offers 60 frames per second and this is aimed at streamers. Razer claims that the Kyo Pro is plug and play and say that you'll get a great image quality straight out of the box without needing to install the software. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's test the Kyo Pro in a few different situations without any adjustments made and see how it stacks up against the classic Logitech C920 and Ava Media's PW313. 
So here's some examples. We've got the examples with HDR off first. We have the studio behind me with no lights on, just RGB and my screens and the curtains drawn. Test number two here, the studio behind me, I have a key light on at 20% brightness, I have my RGB LEDs on and my curtains drawn. Now test number three is a completely not ideal situation, there's no lights on at all and the curtains are drawn. There might be a bit of light spill through the sort of side of my curtain as well as the PC in the background. Test number four is the window directly behind me and I'm testing this as if I was a productivity user. Test number five is a large light source directly to my right hand side and it's at 50% brightness on my light. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing, but this time with HDR enabled via the software. Studio is behind me with no lights on, there's just my RGB LEDs on, my computer screens and the curtains are drawn. Test number two, the studio is behind me, my key light is at 20% brightness, I have my RGB LEDs on and the curtains are still drawn. Test number three is totally unoptimal. Again, no lights at all, the curtains are drawn. Test number four is the window directly behind me. Test number five is the light source 50% to my right. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of HDR enabled versus HDR disabled. So personally, I think the Kyo's image quality wins hands down in all of these tests against the Logitech C920 and Ava Media PW313 webcams, both with the HDR on and off as well. The image quality overall is much better and colors are represented better too, in my opinion. As you can see from the third test with HDR mode enabled, the image quality is slightly dark, I would say, but it is still usable. The C920 was slightly brighter here though, but honestly, I can't imagine too many people trying to use a webcam with no lights on whatsoever, the curtains drawn and no light sources at all. You know, that's just kind of a little bit silly in my opinion at least. HDR mode made the biggest difference when I had a large bright light source to my right. Instead of completely blowing out my face, it kept all the colors and light levels well balanced. Whereas the other webcams failed here totally. The same can be said with HDR mode off. It didn't do so well, but that was to be expected. HDR mode is also excellent for having a bright window directly behind you. It still exposed my face well, unlike the PW313 that was almost a completely black image as it did expose for the window only. Whereas on the opposite side, the C920 exposed for my face, which was better, but then it totally blew the window out entirely. In test two with my key light, set to 20% and my RGB lights on in the background, it really excelled here. And this is a more typical streaming scenario and it looks miles better than the other two webcams in my opinion. I definitely say that the Kyo Pro has passed the test of being aimed at both streamers and productivity users as it worked great throughout these tests. There is a big but though. Did you notice that the autofocus constantly hunted? Well, I did. The Ava Media has a set focus distance 
so it will never hunt. The C920 has autofocus, but it really held up well here in our tests today. But sadly, the Kyo Pro was constantly hunting, even in optimal light. Now, luckily, you can get around this by setting manual focus within Synapse, and I would 100% recommend using that only, at least for the time being. I hope that they can fix the autofocus with a firmware update, but if not, then at least you have the manual focus option. Finally, let's look at Synapse and what we can do within it. First, make sure you're up to date and running the latest version. For me, Synapse updated as soon as I plugged in my Kyo Pro. We have a square preview window to the left, but hang on because Razer have told us that they're working on making this a 16 by nine aspect ratio to display the full image. In the display window, we have a few options, enable or disable HDR mode, wide, medium, and linear field of view options, and autofocus or manual focus options. Personally, I'd rather use manual focus as I've explained earlier. Also, linear field of view is the most flattering as it looks more natural. Wide mode is going to stretch your face slightly to fit in all the background and straight lines won't actually be straight they'll be slightly bent now i personally preferred linear but if you want to show off your surroundings then wide is a good option to have so here's an example of wide medium and linear field of view options Now on the right hand side, we have more options. We have some presets for default, cool, vibrant, warm, or custom color options. I managed to make the image look a lot better in my opinion using the custom option within just a few seconds by changing the brightness, contrast, and saturation sliders, as well as white balance at the bottom. Now I would only change the white balance if you know the Kelvin of your light source that you are using. Finally, in the top, we have advanced options as well. Here's an example of default settings and then my custom settings that I made. So in conclusion, I think the Kyo Pro webcam is excellent. This is a quality streaming camera outputting uncompressed 1080p 60fps over a USB 3.0 lead. The field of view options are excellent and the custom settings in Synapse are very easy to use and they do work well. For productivity, the HDR mode is definitely where it's at. Yes, you only get 30 frames per second, but you don't need 60fps for work calls really, do you? HDR mode will make your calls look much better quality in any business meeting or presentation. Yes, £200 is quite expensive, but for a streamer that wants the best image that they can have at an affordable price, I think this is an achievable price point as it's cheaper than the DSLR route. For a business user, let's say you're hosting many events to lots of staff for a company, for example, then £200 investment is probably worth it. The downsides are that it currently has poor autofocus in my tests at least. This can be fixed in Razer apps by enabling manual focus, which I would recommend. Finally, it is pretty big. I don't see this as a big issue, but for some it might be. Overall, I recommend the Razer Kyo Pro for any use. So what do you guys think of the Razer Kyo Pro? Let us know down in the comments. If you've liked this video, smash the like button, make sure to subscribe, check out our merchandise down below, and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.